Well, Josh, my real passion is carnivorous plants, and particularly the carnivorous plants that are native here in our southwest region of Western Australia. And where did this interest come from? <laughs> from the age of six, I knew I only wanted to do one thing, and that was to study botany and specifically to study carnivorous plants. I went down to dwelling up and I saw a fly struggling on the leaf of a sundew, and I was just hooked right then. What was it that hooked you? I don't know, it was just something about nature flipping everything on its head and this group of plants that had managed to um, sort of turn the tables on insects. How widespread are carnivorous plants? They're found all around the world. There's over 700 species that have now been described around the world uh, and they occur in just about every single region except for the Arctic. And many in WA? We have nearly a quarter of the entire world's carnivorous plants just here in the southwest of Western Australia. Wow. WA alone has nearly 200 species. I had no idea. A lot of people don't. A lot of people have no idea of the incredible diversity that we have just on our doorstep. And why so many here in WA? It's all about the soil and the age of Western Australia, as far as we're aware. Uh, carnivorous plants essentially use the capture of prey as a strategy to be competitive with other plants in the ecosystem. So if they're able to obtain some nutrients from a captured insect, it allows them to perform just that little bit better that gives them a competitive edge. And our soils here are just naturally nutrient poor, they're ancient, um, and essentially it's just a strategy that's been so highly successful that it's allowed a, a diversification of the species that we see today. Carnivorous plants have developed some highly effective ways of catching their prey, from sticky mucus to alluring traps. So Josh, what we have here is a bit of a representation of the different trapping types. So first over here we have Drosser whitakeri, um, and it's a representative of our sort of low-growing rosetted species. Adhesive traps, sticky leaves, they're held really close to the surface of the soil and they predominantly trap insects that are just walking along looking for a feed. And how do the plants get the nutrients? Is it just by a matter of the, the insect decays and then rain or dew washes the soluble nutrients down to the plant? Um, it's actually even more amazing than that. The uh, plants themselves actually produce enzymes in that fluid which specifically targets particular compounds in the insect's body. The enzymes uh, digest things like uh, the nitrogen, the phosphorus, and the plants then withdraw that into their leaves and that's how they obtain their nutrition. How about this one? This is one of the most unique plants on the planet. It's the Albany pitcher plant, native to uh, a very small region just near the uh, Albany town site down on the south coast, um, and is becoming increasingly rare. Um, so this is an example of a pitcher trap, where we have a leaf that has essentially expanded to form um, a pitcher which is capable of holding a small amount of moisture at the bottom. And an insect is drawn to this peristome here, the little teeth around the rim, which secrete a nectar. and Upon entering the, uh, the trap, it finds that the walls are actually quite slippery and it falls down into the bottom of the trap and is digested. Gruesome. Very gruesome. This one on the end's got the most beautiful structure to it in detail. Yeah, this beautiful little plant is Drosera stolonifera. It's a species endemic to the Perth region and many people would be able to go out and find this on their doorstep if they live around the Darling Scarp area. Um, and it's an erect Drosera, which is that it grows up, uh, has these little fan-shaped leaves, and it mainly targets flying insects, just passively coming past. Um, and if their wing or their leg or any other part of the uh, insect comes into contact with the sticky mucilage on the leaves, uh, it's just, it's trapped. <laughs> These native Australian species grow in Mediterranean climates. But Adam also has a greenhouse built for growing more exotic types. Oh, it's lovely and warm and humid in here. Absolutely. So the aim here is to try and create a tropical environment, sort of environment that we find a lot more of these exotic carnivorous plants, of which there are many around the world. Like, for example, this pinguicula here, a butterwort. Um, and this is a species from Europe, but much more wet, permanently humid habitats in Europe. And a greenhouse like this is a perfect environment to grow them. And you can see all the insects stuck to the leaves. Absolutely. These Gruesome, are really effective carnivores, particularly for much smaller insects like fungus gnats and things like that. What a captivating group of plants that have obviously set Adam on a journey for life. 
What's the conservation status of this group of plants in the wild? Unfortunately, a lot of them are under increasing threat. Some species now are down to only a handful of populations, so are, are in quite dire straits, to be honest. Um, we see that there's a lot of threats ranging from fire to even poaching, people going out and collecting these things themselves so that they can grow them at home. What would be your message to people who are developing an interest in this group of plants? Really just try and get out and enjoy them in the wild. Enjoy them where they grow naturally and have the uh, pleasure of going out on a hike or a bushwalk and adventuring in places you've never been to before and just searching for these things to see if you can find them.